now it is my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, my dear colleague, uh, Dr. Khaled Raga from Theodore Pilhars uh, Institute, Cairo, Egypt, uh, uh, to give his uh, very important lecture about the uh, pancreatic cyst in the scopic point of view. Father Dr. Khaled. and my uh, all of our uh, friends in EOS club. Uh, our topics today is how to manage pancreatic cysts from EOS point of view. I'll uh, share. A pancreatic cystic kinuplast prevalence image-based studies 1.2 to 1.9 and uh, cystic detection increase with age. Actually, WHO classification of pancreatic cystic lesion classify cystic pancreatic lesion into uh, epithelial neoplastic lesion and epithelial non-neoplastic, non-epithelial neoplastic and the non-epithelial non-neoplastic. Uh, there are many cystic lesions in the pancreas, but the most common cystic lesion, uh, non-neoplastic pancreatic cystic lesion is pseudocyst, congenital cyst, retention cyst. And what, uh, most of uh, uh, important neoplastic pancreatic cystic lesion, the mucinous tumor, mucinous cystic lesion like intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, mucinous cystic neoplasm, and the non-mucinous tumor cystic lesion like serous cystic neoplasm, solid pseudopapillary neoplasm, cystic neuroendocrine neoplasm, and the acinar cystic neoplasm, ductal adenocarcinoma with cystic degeneration. <coughs> One of the most important question in pancreatic cystic lesion, when to operate and when to observe. I think this is and that is the most important question between gastroenterologist, endoscopist, surgeon, and oncologist for how to manage pancreatic cysts. If you want our goals in management of pancreatic cystic lesion, we have desirable outcome, like in case of benign cystic lesion, as in case of uh, retention cyst or the moid cyst or pseudo cyst, for uh, like in observation and what uh, one of the most out outcome in malignant pancreatic cystic lesion is early resection without uh, uh, distal metastasis and in pre-malignant cystic lesion resection before malignant transformation occurs but the uh, undesirable outcome when there is a benign cystic lesion and we underwent uh, resection and uh, gave the patient the, the risk of uh, and the complication of uh, the surgery and also one of the undesirable outcome when malignant cystic lesion be, uh, being observed and we miss this cystic lesion to become metastatic later on and pre-malignant cystic lesion, lesions to resection after malignant transformation occurs. So if you have pancreatic cystic lesion, some cysts you should resect and some cysts you should observe like cysts to resect like in case of cyst adenocarcinoma in malignant IBMN especially main duct IBMN, branch duct IBMN or side branch with high risk cystic matter, as we will mention later, solid pseudobabillary neoplasm and cystic neuroendocrine tumor more than two centimeter. And cysts to observe like in pseudocyst, serous cyst adenoma, branch duct IBMN without uh, worrisome features or high risk cystic matter, and small cystic uh, neuroendocrine tumor less than one, uh, uh, two centimeter one centimeter and one, uh, between one and two uh, centimeter. The diagnostic tools we have and their limitations in pancreatic cystic uh, diagnosis, CT and the MRI, both modalities has in pancreatic protocol uh, has the sensitivity to detect uh, the cystic lesion, but the only importance of MRI or MRC for cystic lesion is to show how it's connected to pancreatic duct especially in IBMN and the side branch IBMN, and to differentiate between side branch IBMN and serous cystadenone. Of course, EOS, but EOS needs technical expertise, which is not, may not be available in every center, and uh, also accuracy no greater than 80%. EOS FNA, it, as Dr. Mahmoud said, shows some beneficial, if, especially if you have a positive cytology, but false and negative cytologies may be high up to 60%. It is non-diagnostic uh, and cytobrushing significantly more likely to detect 
I beam in. Of course, cystic fluid analysis in cytology and uh, some of tumor marker like carcinoma baryonic antigen and the myelase. And some recent uh, modalities like confocal endomicroscopy, but it is not our daily practice to use confocal endomicroscopy. So the diagnosis of pancreatic cystic lesion needs combi a combination of clinical and imaging characteristics provides the best initial preoperative diagnosis of cyst type. Uh, CT and the MRCB are the most useful primary methods for defining the morphology locations and multiplicity. And uh, communication with pancreatic duct. So the diagnosis needs AOS, FNA, cytology, CA, amylase, and uh, nowadays but some of molecular analysis. More recent studies have shown that molecular analysis for genes mutation can distinguish between branched duct IBN from mucinous cystic neoplasm. And since positive genes mutation is observed only in IBMN but not in mucinous cystic neoplasm. One of most important points in uh, cystic lesion that Elevated of carcinoma and byronic antigen is a marker that distinguishes between mucinous tumor, mucinous cystic neoplasm from non mucinous cyst, but not malignant from benign cyst. So it can differentiate between mucinous tumor, mucinous cystic lesion like IBMN, mucinous cystic cystadenoma or adenocarcinoma, and between non mucinous like serous cystadenoma or uh, spin or simple congenital or simple cyst. But CEA cannot differentiate between benign cyst and malignant cyst. And the cutoff of one, uh, 192 to 200 ng per milli is 80% accuracy. And the low CEA level does not exclude a mucinous cyst. Cystic fluid amylase is not elevated on IBMN. Some of serous cysts typically have low levels of both CEA and the amylase. And of course, cytology can be diagnostic, although sensitivity is limited by scanned cellularity. We will see some of uh, most common pancreatic cysts from endoscopic or EOS uh, point of view. This is a case of a pseudocyst, which has a symbol uh, or a wall well defined and clear content in the left side of the screen and mixed of solid and cystic. Uh, solid and uh, uh, fluid component in the right side of the screen. And we should inform that the clinical history of the patient is important. And EOS FNA with detection of, sear of uh, cystic fluid amylase, more than 5,000 uh, concentration are present. And the CEA should be not elevated except in infected cyst. In infected pseudocyst, CEA may be elevated. But one of most important points is level of uh, amylase, a low amylase level of less than 250 units per milli can exclude a pseudocyst. What about in serous cyst adenoma? In serous cyst adenoma, it has a typical characteristic AUS image, like in microcystic serous cyst adenoma, with the uh, famous uh, expression of honeycombs between. Uh, which gives us this characteristic impression, a honeycomb's appearance. But we should know also that serous cyst adenoma, we, uh, there are two, three types, microcystic and the macrocystic, and to less extent, a solid, a solid uh, uh, types. Solid types in less than 18%, and it, it is extremely difficult to uh, diagnose this serous cyst adenoma uh, by uh, EOS or EOS even FNA and usually most of serous cyst adenoma solid type uh, diagnosed after surgical resection. So the limitation in EOS FNA in serous cyst adenoma that the cystic lesion is less than one centimeter, which could, you, you cannot uh, capture more of cystic fluid for CEA or amylase or cytology. So this gives the most of expert between two um, approach between close observation or let the patient without any surveillance. Also, mucinous cystic neoplasm, it has characteristic image by EOS. The macrocystic, it is more common in females, especially in body and tear, 
and it has a characteristic peripheral calcification. But you should know also that the peripheral calcification is not specific for mucinous cystic neoplasm. It could be present also in um, solid pseudobabillary neoplasm. But one of the most important areas is mucinous cystic neoplasm. It is not connected to pancreatic duct. So you can buy a combination of modality between EOS and the radiology and the EOS between cytology and the detection of CA in cystic fluid and the cytology, you can give high impression uh, uh, that is mucinous cystic neoplasm. So also in cystic lesion, you should identify if there is a solid component, which is a neuronodule, and you, uh, you should differentiate between neuronodule and mucus plug. Mucus plug, usually in EOS, it has a, a rim of hyperoxygenicity around the plug and it can be, it, it is movable. If you uh, push the cyst or change the position of uh, the patient. But you, if you want to uh, have a high accuracy for the transition, you should use contrast enhanced endoscopic ultrasound. And you should target this solid component or neuronegule by FNA. Mucinocystic neoplasm, three centimeter or more symptomatic EOS FNA and has a feature of tibia or, or and family history for malignancy, you should go for surgery. But if you have a mucinocystic neoplasm less than three centimeters with no symptoms between, uh, we, you, you, ha you have two approach of two views, either early surgery versus conservative with close follow-up. And one of the most important, uh, one of the uh, uh, knowledge that you should know also that in recent data suggests that the risk of malignant transformation of mucinous cystic neoplasm is less than that of branched duct IBM in, and that also uh, these lesions are associated with low mortality. If you compare between the mortality from uh, malignant transformation of mucinous cystic lesion and the mortality or morbidity from the surgery from distal pancreatectomy, distal pancreatectomy has a morbidity of about 25%, including 15 to 20% of risk of diabetes. The main importance in this topics is how to, uh, to diagnose and how to manage IPMN. Intra-babillary mucinous or intraductal mucinous uh, neoplasm, babillary mucinous neoplasm, you, uh, we have three types, main duct IBMN, branch duct IBMN, and mixed duct, mixed type. In main duct IBMN is uh, characterized by segmental or diffuse dilatation of the main pancreatic duct. And dilatation of the main pancreatic duct is more than five millimeter, but on one condition without other causes of obstruction. So if you have a dilatation of pancreatic duct, you should search for first if there is a cause for dilatation, like in a mass lesion that cause a prep to the uh, dilatation of the uh, pancreatic duct. If there is a stone, like in case of chronic pancreatitis, which causes proximal or upstreaming dilatation, or papillary something uh, like in papillary adenoma or papillary adenocarcinoma, and you cannot identify by CT or uh, EOS. So if you have a segmental or diffuse dilatation of the main pancreatic duct without any other cause of obstruction, you should suspect for main duct IBMN. And in branched duct IBMN, pancreatic cystic lesion more than five millimeter in diameter, and it communicating with main pancreatic duct. And uh, the most sensitive modality for detection of uh, branch duct IBMN is MRCB. Mixed duct, it have both, yeah, features of both main duct IBMN and branch duct IBMN. So in case of main duct IBMN, diffuse homogeneous, either segmental or diffuse dilatation. And like in this region, it is as diffuse dilatation of the main pancreatic duct without definite cause for dilatation. And as you see here, this is a side branch IBM in cystic lesion more than five millimeter that is connected to a normal caliber pancreatic duct. And in the last image, this shows a mixture of uh, feature between main duct IBM in and side branch IBM in. It's important to exclude other causes of malignant or of main duct IBM in, uh, especially 
current pancreatitis, a small pancreatic adenocarcinoma, or an ampullary mass. It is important to uh, visualize the ampulla endoscopy to exclude any ampullary lesion. The main pancreatic duct should be traced to the ampulla to ensure that there is no small obstructive lesion and features of chronic pancreatitis should be sought in this condition. Okay, if you have a case of dilated, diffused dilated main pancreatic duct, and uh, fortunately we face like a, a condition uh, last week in one of our cases, homogeneous dilatation of the main pancreatic duct without any definite cause, apart from some of parenchyma, uh, uh, features of uh, uh, of chronicity like hypercoax strands and small uh, calcification scatter without any stones in the main pancreatic duct and MRCB and without any uh, obstructing lesion um, in pancreas or in ampulla. In this condition, you should have EOS if in of the main pancreatic duct can be performed and samples sent for carcinium bearing antigen, cytology, and the looking form you seen and if you have the modality for uh, uh, molecular markers like GNAS or KRAS or uh, P252, uh, uh, you should investigate also. If they diagnose after EOSFNA from the main pancreatic, that is still uncertain and it could help and you should have some suspicions for uh, main duct IBM in, uh, you can proceed for uh, ERCB with brush uh, sampling or even for spike glass by pancreatoscopy can be uh, considered. Uh, also, uh, a concom uh, concomitant uh, pancreatic duct adenocarcinoma in area which is completely separate from the cystic lesion in IBMN, uh, we can face it. And it's very important to, to inspect not only uh, the cystic lesion region, but also to inspect all of the pancreatic uh, parenchyma. Uh, and uh, as you all know that in IPMN, it has a characteristic imaging of fish mouse or fish eye appearance with uh, flushing of uh, more of mucoid secretion came out from uh, the babilla, as you see here in this typical image of IPMN main bucket. Also, we uh, have the entity of solid pseudo babilla in neoplasm, and the hallmark of this lesion, it is a central hemorrhagic cystic degeneration, and we we can uh, expect or uh, that this is a solid pseudobabillary neoplasm, as you see, with some of cystic lesion and some of uh, solid component. And the aspect of FNA, it shows uh, a bloody necrotic FNA sample. And most of solid pseudobabillary neoplasm uh, should be resected. No observation at all for this entity. Uh, cystic degeneration of neuron the crying or adenocarcinoma, it, it try always to target the uh, solid part uh, of this lesion, and usually you will show uh, the uh, malignant feature in solid part. If you target the, uh, the cystic component, it has a less sensitivity uh, than if you target by FNA, the solid component. So in our practice, EOS, uh, which we have some uh, limitation if you want to differentiate between mucinous cystic adenocarcinoma and the pseudocyst. The main uh, limitation is if you have a lack of uh, clear history of uh, pancreatitis and you have a large microcystic uh, component, uh, cystic lesion, uh, of course, after uh, FNA and uh, the morphology of the cystic fluid and carcinium bearing antigen, we can give more important information to differentiate. Also, we have uh, some difficulties to differentiate between uh, serocystic neoplasm and branched duct IBMN. And between the macrocystic uh, serocystic neoplasm and mucinous cyst adenoma, and the, to differentiate between mucus blood and the mural nodule, if, especially if you, if you don't have a contrast enhanced uh, ultrasound. So, according to a three primary tests for differentiate between mucinous neoplasm and non mucinous uh, cystic lesion, only the morphology by EOS is, has a low sensitivity between 50% and specified 44, and cytology alone uh, 30, and the CA it is the highest for 75 and the 80 and the 83. But if you combine EOS morphology with the cytology uh, or cytology carcinogenic antigen and morphology, you will raise your sensitivity. So we uh, recommend to not to depend. Uh, only on the EOS morphology, but you should combine the morphology 
with the cytology and also for and with uh, the tumor marker, especially calcium on the ring antigen. Sometimes you are lucky now if you uh, uh, during the examination of cystic lesion, as you see here, we will focus on if there is any uh, solid nodules or not. There is a simple well-defined wall and there is a citation as you see in this uh, AUS. And during uh, our uh, FNA, of course, if, as you know, any FNA in the cystic lesion, you should give antibiotics and you should, you should ask with all of the cystic lesion uh, as possible as you can. And after FNA, as you see here, we found that this white creamy fluids, which gave the most, one of uh, the rarest uh, cystic lesion, which is lymphoepithelial uh, lesion or lymphangioma, which is a completely uh, benign condition with very rare malignant transformation. So the patient under uh, observation. Of course, if in A, the fluids, the morphology of the, the fluids, you can suspect this is a lymphoepithelial and this turbid maybe in pseudocyst or infected cyst, and this is uh, a blood tangent maybe in uh, cystic degeneration for the tumor or solid uh, pseudo neoplasm, uh, provides that you, you don't puncture uh, a blood vessel, interfering blood vessels. And this clear fluids, it may, it could be uh, a mucinous uh, fluid, so you should uh, give for CAA and mucine and cytology. And this, uh, uh, like a summary for uh, the physical and EUS imaging for uh, mucinous and branch duct or solid and serous cystic neoplasm and pseudo uh, cyst. Uh, the most important is um, is there is a communication with macerative duct or not, like in branch duct uh, and in pseudo cyst. And also, mucine high mucine level and CA level in mucinous tumor, like in mucinous and branch duct, and, and the low mucine level and, and, and the low uh, uh, also uh, level of amylase uh, in case of mucine and branch duct, and the high level in pseudocyst. So, to summarize, this is an assist for which with uh, EOS or EOS if it is. To some extent, it is easy to diagnose, like in pseudocyst with history of pancreatitis, typical serous cystic neoplasm, uh, typical IBM in uh, cystic adenocarcinoma, and we suspect and we diagnose, and solid pseudobabular neoplasm and the lymphoepithelial cyst. But sometimes it's difficult, even with FNA, and uh, like in macrocystic serous cystic neoplasm or mucinous tumor, and in branch duct IBM in. And the pseudocyst, but without history of pancreatitis versus mucinous tumor and the cystic neuroendocrine smaller, and you cannot puncture for FNA, and 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 also to sometimes difficult to differentiate between neuron nodule and the mucus plug, especially in uh, side branch or main duct IBM. How to approach a pancreatic cystic lesion? First, radiological modalities like MRCBCT, AOS FNA to target for cytology, carcinogenic drink antigen and amylase, and you should not your own uh, decision, multi, uh, multidisciplinary approach uh, and meeting like the, between surgeon and endoscopist and the radiologist. And uh, according to this, you, you can uh, put the patient under observation or conservative versus uh, surgery. There are main different guidelines. And after revising of many of the guidelines, we uh, show that there is a, a discrepancy between each guidelines. But to be honest, most uh, the most famous uh, and applicable guidelines is uh, uh, Fukuka uh, 2012 and the European guidelines uh, 2013 and EGA uh, 2015. So there is something, some items that they are uh, 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 between each uh, guidelines they agree, like in case of spin, okay, so, solid pseudobabular new blast in European and the American and the EGA for section. No observation or no conservative management for this patient. In mucinous cystic neoplasm, also all of uh, three guidelines for resection. But in main duct IBM N, and as we mentioned, that the malignant transformation for IBM N is, is extremely high. So for resection, uh, but in one condition in EGA, it it uh, doesn't depend upon the diameter of uh, or diagnosis of IBM by diameter only of pancreatic duct. But also, it should be accompanied by positive cytology for atibia or carcinoma bearing antigen uh, high ele uh, highly elevated or neural nodule or like uh, some, or something like uh, this. So, uh, but the difference between Fukuoka and European uh, 
guidelines and the EGA in branch back to IP link. The most difference here in European is uh, that they are putting the uh, increasing size of cystic lesion uh, both in uh, factor one of the factors for to decide if, if you decide for uh, resect or not for this patient. As you see here, in different in Fukuk and the EGA 2015. This depend upon pancreatic drug dilatation, solid component or not, cytology, and size more than three centimeter. Uh, but in uh, in European 2013, the cystic lesion, if more than four centimeter, they consider it as for resection in branch duct IBMN or increase serum increasing of carcinium periodic and sorry CA199 and the presence of symptoms, whatever obstructive jaundice or not. In Fukuoka, they divided into between high risk cystic matter like neural nodule and uh, solid component, which is the similar in between the, three, uh, the other two guidelines, but worrisome features like in cystic lesion, second main duct between five and the nine uh, millimeter non-enhancing neural nodule abrupt change in pancreatic duct. So if you see here, there is different between uh, observation in cystic in, uh, in branch duct cystic IBMN and the two early uh, resected. That's why, if uh, each uh, guidelines depend upon certain uh, papers, is uh, that as you see here in these papers, the change in main pancreatic duct diameter, a number of patients, if you have more than six millimeter in branch duct uh, IB main or main duct IB main, the instance they found that the high grade uh, dysplasia and malignancy more than 90%. But if you more than 80, 8 millimeter, it is 65. So there is a discrepancy between papers and between finding even in size of the cystic lesion but the only limitation here it is a retrospective it depends upon after surgical uh, resection and as you see here the uh, difference between the cystic lesion between three uh, three centimeter and four uh, centimeter and that's, that's why the european depend upon four uh, four centimeter as it is 80 percent sensitivity and 40 percent specificity for malignant transformation so one key difference between IBMN and the other types of pancreatic cysts is that IBMN can occur and they can recur in the remaining parts of pancreas following surgery. And this a small algorithm, how to differentiate between and how to follow the cystic lesion. It is not only surgery for management of pancreatic cystic lesion, but there are under research a rule of mucosal ablation by uh, ethanol injection or radio frequency ablation or injection of uh, some of chemotherapy. Uh, and uh, there is a multi center study which in patients with post pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor and pancreatic cystic lesion mucinous or IBMN who, who refused the surgery or unfit for surgery found that the size of, the, of cystic lesion decreased by 75% in patients with complete uh, re, uh, resolution on imaging in 25%, which is a more promising uh, data in radiofrequency ablation of this uh, malignant pancreatic cystic lesion. So from my point of view, uh, I think management of pancreatic cystic lesion depends upon lesion fact features like the size and the nodule and risk stigmata. Also, we should put the patient factors in uh, in mind, like is the patient is fit for surgery or not, and the patient prefer some patient to prefer don't prefer uh, to uh, be close to follow up, and they uh, prefer early surgery and radical surgery, and also local national expertise and local national experience in 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 patient like in patients of uh, surgery surgeries of uh, webbel or total pancreatectomy or uh, segmental uh, pancreatectomy. So at last. Our take home message a combination of the clinical imaging and uh, characteristic of the patient. The history provides the best initial preoperative diagnosis of the cystic type. Size of the cyst and cytology and calcium brain cancer amylase can help in differentiation. Multidisciplinary approach is mandatory for better outcome and do, don't rush for surgery and also uh, don't be reluctant to in uh, observation. This is our uh, dear Professor Dr. Al Ismail. Uh, one of the most uh, uh, persons who helped us in our institute. Uh, thank you very much uh, and sorry for long time. Thank you.